When I'm standing on a stage, I'm always reminded why we design books, because they end up in bookcases and not on the stage with clock running. But, I mean, I ended up here anyway, so I'm going to tell you a story instead of writing it. We are the Foreign Frenzen, a graphic design studio specialized in the design of books. Annelou and I design books for clients with good stories. But every now and then, we make a book about an independent team. And one of those projects I'm going to talk about today, the most believed fairy tale. A fairy tale about our economic crisis, our money, and our economy. When I was a child, I think I got my first economic model. I always went to the swimming pool and always got 50 cents to buy some candy at the swimming pool. And I could tell you exactly which quantity of what kind of candy you could buy for 50 cents. So, for example, if you would invest your 50 cents in the frogs, you would, you would always get 10. But if you would invest in the moons, you would always get 5. So as a child, I figured it out. Money is a really simple thing. It's just something to tell how much candy you can buy. So I might... I made my first economic model. This is the Frog Index, and this is, I think, the first economic model I've made. <laughs> and I always thought that economy was a really, really simple thing. Later on, of course, I noticed newspapers hardly ever use candy to express uh, economy. They always use facts and figures, and they have all the lines. But still, the idea was the same. You have money, and that represents a certain amount of something else. But then, something happened. The crisis started, and once in a sudden, the newspaper changed. The economy pages of the newspaper were no longer only about the numbers and the facts and the figures. It was also about written articles. And the language of the bankers, the politicians, and the journalists also changed from a language which was really about the objective system. It changed into almost like they talked about a fairy tale. There were headlines like, belief in the economy is going down. And I thought, why should we actually believe in that system? Because it's just about facts and figures. So who cares if we believe in it? And we always love new words. New words are the, the things that we collect to make new books about. And during the crisis, the economy pages were like paradise. They were like about economic bubbles and about belief. And we thought, if we just collect all those words, maybe we can make a fairy tale about our economy. Because maybe it's a good idea if we don't see our economy as an objective system, but just as an option. So we designed a book about it the most believed fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a creature, a small creature, who decided that he wanted to become something more and something bigger, something really important. So he thought, how can I become important? And he came up with an idea. If I would just draw circles on paper, and people would want to have the circles, he would become big and important. And the plan worked out. People wanted the circles. Some people wanted really big circles to live in. Some just wanted a small circle to play soccer with. Or some wanted four circles to drive in. And they became a really big success. And the whole world started to exist out of the circles. But then, something happened. The creature went out of paper, and he thought, well, now I can't make circles anymore. But he thought, maybe I can just draw them in the air. I can just make bubbles out of them. And people actually didn't mind. They thought, well, a bubble is fine as well. It's almost like a circle, so whatever. Give me the bubble. And everybody always gave something in return to the creature. But then, something else happened. The creature became so busy that 
he couldn't supply any more bubbles. So he said to the next one who's coming to ask for a bubble, he said, well, give me your sandwich and I will give you a bubble once upon a time. And actually, they were fine with it. But not only the bank which for I want to become big, big, bigger, but also the people were thinking about, I just want to have more circles and bigger circles. So somebody came up with the idea, maybe we have to get the biggest circle of all, the sun. And so they started to build a tower. And everybody was handing in his circles to make one big tower to reach for the sun. But bubbles didn't turn out to be that strong. And the promised circles couldn't be supplied. So the whole tower started to shake and shifting and collapsed. So this is where the story ends, I think. But if they will live happily ever after, time will tell. But maybe it's a good idea if we all start to think about how we want to design our own happily ever after. Thank you.